So you're new to real estate. You just got your license. You haven't closed a sale. And let's face it, you don't even know what you're doing. Real estate can be tough. It can be overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out and no one's ever showed you how to do this properly. Yes, there's a bunch of books out there. There's videos. But with all this stuff, you're confused on exactly what to do. I'm here to give you the tips on how to become a successful real estate agent when you're just starting out in this game. Hi, my name is Munif Ali, and I own one of the most successful real estate brokerages in Southern California. I've closed billions of dollars of sales over my last 25 years and gone on to own multiple brick and mortar businesses. I started this YouTube channel so that I could help people achieve more financial freedom and success. And my number one vehicle for doing so has always been real estate. So let's get it started. One of the first things you want to do is align yourself with people who are already successful. See, success leaves clues. So go off in your area. See, look at who's putting out all the signs and what brokerage is dominating a specific area. And then you want to see what agent is doing a good volume of business and see if you can either work on their team or get them to be a mentor for you. Success leaves clues and so does failure you see the great thing about real estate is that everything is replicatable how do you get your business and your mentor tells you why door knock well try that door knocking activity someone might say well you know i have a huge sphere of influence and i make x amount of calls every day start to do that there are many many different ways to become successful in real estate i'm going to explain one of the methods that i use to get inexperienced agents into production right away Look, let's face it, not everybody could be an air traffic controller or a fighter pilot or a police officer. Not everybody should be in real estate. That's the fact of the matter. And when I started out in real estate agents, definitely, and still do to this day, even though I own a brokerage, piss me off. A lot of them don't arrive in real estate with the right mindset. And let me explain. A lot of times people come into real estate with the big capital F word, which is flexibility. I wanna be my own boss, I wanna set my own hours, I wanna do my own shit. That kind of mentality without structure in place is guaranteed to give you failure. The capital F word is flexibility. And if you don't watch your flexibility, and if you're too entrepreneurial in the beginning, the other capital F word is going to be failure. You'll be just like the other 500,000 licensees just in the state of California alone that have a real estate license. And it's a constant revolving door because the barrier to entry in real estate is really thin. Anyone with a heartbeat and is a legal resident can go ahead and get a real estate license. Whoopie do. How are you going to be successful and earn a living at this? So continue on with our conversation. These are the kind of things that you need to implement right away to get your mind right, because without the proper mindset, you're going to fail in real estate. And I can almost guarantee it unless you're doing this as a hobby. I want to ask you what you got your real estate license for. You no, know, real estate is really one of those cool and sexy things. You're at a party. What do you do? Well, I'm in real estate and someone flings out a card, but there's a lot more to this career. It's really hard to get up and running, not impossible, just difficult. So bear with me joining a right brokerage. Now, I know there's a ton of brokerages out there. There's Compass and Coa Banker and Remax and Keller Williams and all of these companies out there. Number one, is your broker making you broker? I want you to put some time and effort in. Don't have to go with the big box retail real estate establishments. Find someone that's in an area that's doing really well in the area that you want to work with and focus on. Find out what brokerages exist there and giving back a ton of value to their agents. Do they just have online training programs? You're not, you don't learn great online. Do they have large mega teams? Are they dominant in a marketplace? And if they're dominant in your marketplace, they must be doing something right. Go to all the open houses, see which agents in their brokerage are doing what. Learn by seeing what that brokerage is doing. Now, the other thing I want you to watch out for is brokerages that promise you everything under the sun. They're not gonna charge you fees. They're not going to, they're gonna give you a huge commission basis. And now monetarily, you might say, oh, well, you know, free is great. But what are they doing as far as training is concerned? What are they showing you as far as skill level is concerned? If the brokerage doesn't fight for its commission, how are they ever going to teach you to fight for your commission? So spend a little time because everybody's going to be courting you because you mean income in one way or another and find the right brokerage fit for you. I can't answer all your questions with regard to what a right brokerage is, but you could definitely ask in the comments down below and I will go ahead and respond if you do have questions about picking the right brokerage. You wanna find a place that where you can learn not new strategies, but fundamental basics on sales. 
You want to find people who have brokers or ownership or leaders that are involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the brokerage. And this will help you connect with them, learn from them, grow with them. It's really crucial that your brokerage that you pick has a mentor training program of some sort where you are put together with experienced agents that are relevant in closing deals. This will help you get into the sales market a lot faster and you'll be able to navigate and learn skills from people who've done it before. The other thing you want to do right away is to make phone calls. Pick up your smartphone as it is. Look at how many people are in your database or just your phone. That's just a fancy word and see how many people you know. If it's 150, great. If it's 50, great. If it's 5,000, great. This is your sphere of influence. People that know you by name and face. People that recognize you. You want to let as many people as possible know that you have switched to an, into a career of real estate or you just got your license and I'm affiliated with this brokerage and I just wanted to give you the good news. A lot of people shy away from relatives and friends when it comes to business and that whole stupid theory of I don't mix business with pleasure and I don't do business with friends and relatives. Welcome to sales. You'll have to do business with friends and relatives because that's who is going to be your first customers. You don't need a fancy script to tell them, hey, Dave, I just got my license. Uh, I'm hanging it with so-and-so realty and my goal is to help X amount of people. Do you know of anybody that wants to buy or sell real estate? How complicated and complex is that? I've taken that same script and made very, very brand new agents hyper productive by having them call their sphere of influence or their database or let's get all those complicated theories out the way. Just call the people you know that know you, that like you, love you, trust you and know that you're a hard worker and that you're going to be committed to this. Now, if you have a whole history of selling stuff and this is just another cockamamie scheme for you to make money, then find something else because the more genuine you are as a salesperson, the more people know it. I don't believe in high pressure sales tactics. I believe in serving your client base. And if it's the people that know you, love you, like you, and trust you, you've got to give them impeccable service up front. Once you start to make sales, you'll be more comfortable talking to everyone and strangers are going to become part of your database. You're going to show them knowledge about your industry. You're going to be meeting people all over the place, on the street, at the supermarket, at the gym, and you're going to try to convert as many people as possible to get to know you and to remember that you're in real estate. I always want you to think old school and fundamental when it comes to building relationships and cycles. You're going to build rapport with everyone you meet. You're going to give them a great experience and service and find out what their goals are. And always be ready to proudly tell people that you're in real estate sales, but make sure that you're doing this with focus. It might take a little while to find clients, but always believe every market is filled with opportunity. You always hear this shit about, you know, when as a real estate agent, someone's going to ask you, how's the market? And there is no such thing as a good market or a bad market. There's just a market. It's fueled by the dynamics of human behavior and how human beings feel overall. People in a given market or locale, if they're scared of something, scared human beings act in a particular way. Excited human beings act in a particular way. Human beings who got steady income are going to act a certain way versus human beings who've just been laid off, right? So everything is fueled by the local dynamics of human behavior. So understanding that is relevant and important. So just in case you think you're entering, oh, I'm entering the real estate market, it's not really a good time to enter, BS. That just means that you have to do more and expect less. So continue to build on finding as many people as possible who are looking to take advantage of whatever market you're in, whether it's buyers or sellers. You just have to keep looking and exert your effort in the effort of getting to know as many people as possible. And you gotta be patient. This is a business and you're gonna be an entrepreneur. Nobody would ever think about starting a business. Let's say it's a restaurant or a mechanic shop or whatever kind of business. You would never start a business without having reserves. When you come into real estate, make sure you have three to six months of reserves to live off of because it might take you a little bit to get your skill set up to the aptitude to start to close transactions. The other thing is that you need to act and behave like a MF and entrepreneur. Now everybody, you know, you see all these kids running around with entrepreneur in their Instagram and they haven't sold shit. Real estate agents are entrepreneurs. You work for yourself. So your operations have to be that of an entrepreneur. You have to have, you have to dress the part, talk the part. You have to have business hours. You have to have periods throughout your day where you actually have a sound plan for your daily activities. Planning out your business and its decisions means that you are actually going to treat your business like a business. And as an entrepreneur, you got to understand you got to put hours and hours into your craft and understanding that each facet of your business should be operated like a business, like having a budget, being able to generate growth and having an income. Just accept the fact that you are in business now and everything is a numbers game. 
That means money coming in, money going out. You have to operate it like an entrepreneur because you really are the CEO of your own business when it comes to having a real estate license. I can't stress that enough because having that hashtag or having you know something under your description that says entrepreneur is not enough. You have to be ready to go through weeks and months of not being able to close a deal. It's more than just driving around the neighborhood and saying hello to people and introducing yourself as the local realtor. You have to actually do the work. It's just like driving by a gym and expecting to get muscles. You actually have to perform the exercises. So polish up, make a business plan, know exactly how many deals you have to close to earn the money you need to sustain a living. And after building relationships with as many people as possible, you have to go out there, work open houses, do door knocks. Let's, so let me get into the spoke. So let me get into how to lead generate real quick. And this is my cut and dry answer. You can go out there into a, a parking lot, pass out flyers with your name and phone number on it. You can go out there and door knock in the neighborhoods that you wanna work in. You door knock until you get a lead. That's how I look at it. Um, you can go out there and work open houses. You can go out there and call everybody that you know at least a couple times a month and remind them you're in real estate. And ask them if they know of anyone that wants to invest in real estate, buy or sell their property. You have to do this continuously through holidays, to weekends, through birthdays, do whatever it takes to get a deal. And once you start getting in the habit of closing deals, more and more people see your signage, more and more people get to know you, and then you start to build a business. If you were looking at this video to get the easy answer, there is no easy answer. You have to put in the work. I've been in this business for almost 30 years and it has given me great opportunity to invest in multiple businesses and to travel the world and do things that I never dreamed of. But you gotta put in the work. You don't become a real estate agent that's making a living without actually putting in effort. If you're looking at getting more financially savvy and aware, go ahead and tune in to my podcast, the Munif Ali podcast every Monday. I give you unfiltered opinions and tips to help everybody that's aspiring to be the best version of yourselves you can be and to become more financially successful. So go ahead and catch me there. Let's face it, look, when you're in sales, you're in a eat only when you hunt type of mentality. So you're not expecting a paycheck from somebody or some business. You gotta write your own paycheck and that means that all of your hours need to be spent in business or what I call dollar producing activities. Get that right, write that down, D-P-A, dollar producing activities. So if you're washing your car and you're a realtor, what's the value of your time worth? If you're mowing the lawn and you're a realtor, what's the value of your time worth? And if you've closed a few deals, you have an hourly rate. Are you using your time wisely by promoting your business? And knowing the right things to say is crucial and important as well. But go out there and talk to as many people and convert them into leads as possible. I'm gonna be making more more content for you about how to become more successful in sales and in real estate, go ahead and ask me the questions you need to become more prepared. But this video here is just to give you the basics of what you need mindset wise and practice wise to become the most successful real estate agent that you can be without all the BS. Right now, a lot of people will try to go out there and get the perfect business card or the perfect brochure and all of that, but there's a ton of people in your phone you haven't even contacted to share the good news that you are a full-fledged real estate professional now. You wanna do as many open houses as possible, so you know, call agents in the area that have stale listings or brand new listings, tell them that you wanna work their open house to get your name out as much as possible. And then maybe someday, somebody will be calling you to work your open houses. I found that more and more agents expect to earn a living without really treating it like a career. So stop treating your real estate profession as a hobby. Start treating it like a business and all businesses look at activities and look at earnings, income and expenditure. Hey look, real estate can be tough, but so can life and everything else. It takes you a while before you start to get paid and see your efforts come to fruition and actually make a living. But you have to be patient and you have to follow a plan. You have to treat your business like a business and eventually you'll reap some rewards and it'll be fruitful. Just like anything else in life, the key here is to build relationships and networks. The more you take care of your business relationships, the easier it becomes to find clients and expand your business. You might have a personality that's withdrawn or a personality that's outgoing. It doesn't matter what your personality is. Build relationships and over time you get business. People do business with people they trust. So make sure your reputation is stellar and no one deal is ever worth your reputation. It takes a lot of time to learn this craft of sales and how to do certain dialogue and certain conversations in real estate. That's why you have to surround yourself with people that have done it before that are successful. Because remember, practice every single day to become proficient 
not perfect. See, I have my 115 agents routinely practice the art of becoming the best that they can be through service, through being able to serve others to get them to their goals. And the side effect is that commission check. Just like the fruitful rewards of subscribing to this channel or liking this video, go ahead and comment down below if you have questions and thank you for watching. And if you wanna learn more about real estate, go ahead and click this video next, buy or wait, should you invest in real estate.